Affinity version 2.1 has just been released, and in this video, I'll show you the top 10 biggest changes. Starting off with number 1, we have a brand new Vector Flood Fill tool in Affinity Designer. This tool is like a paint bucket tool, which you can use on overlapping shapes. So for example, if I select all of these rectangles, I can use the Vector Flood Fill tool to fill in the areas with my desired colors. This tool is really easy to use, and it works with shapes, text, and anything you've drawn with the pen tool. I know a lot of people have wanted a tool like this for a long time, so I'm glad we finally got it added. Number two on our list is Balanced Dashed Lines, which you can use in any of the three Affinity programs. To see how this works, I'm going to make this square stroke a dashed line. Then I'll change the size of the dashed lines, and the size of the gap in between each line. As you can see, the corners of the square don't look very good, but with the new update, we can easily fix this by turning on the Balanced option. After balancing the line, our strokes look perfect, even on the corners. For the third update, Affinity Photo's crop tool has gotten some nice improvements. To see how these work, I'll first get out the crop tool. The first improvement is that now we can hold down shift while cropping, and the crop will stay in the original aspect ratio of the photo. The next improvement is that we can change our crop by clicking and dragging on any of the edges of the crop marquee. Previously, you could only change the crop by using one of the crop handles on the edges of the crop marquee. And finally, we've gotten an upgrade for straightening photos. To see this, I'll press straighten at the top, and then I'll click and drag across this photo's horizon line. In all of the versions of Affinity Photo, this will rotate your photo based on the line you drew, but now the photo is automatically cropped inwards to remove those transparent areas that occur when you rotate an image. I've wanted this feature for years, so I'm happy we finally got it. Number four on our list is a small but nice improvement to the brushes panel, which is applicable to all of the Affinity programs. If I open the brushes panel, there's now a new option in the panel settings. We can now show the names of our brushes. If you use a lot of different brushes, being able to see their name will be a great addition to help you find your brushes faster. Update number five is a few improvements to guides, which you can use in any of the Affinity programs. First, I'll press Command or Control R to open rulers. Then I'll click and drag on the rulers to make a couple of guides. All of that is the same as it was before the update, but now in 2.1, we have a few new changes. First, if you hold down Command or Control, you can click and drag on a guide to duplicate it. Or, if you hold down Alt or Option, you can click on a guide to delete it. And if you click and drag on a guide to move it, you will see a new piece of information. Just as before, we see the position of this guide on the X or Y axis, but now we can also see how far we've moved the line. And finally, we can double click on any of the guides to open the Guides Manager, which I think is a nifty little shortcut. For number 6 on our list, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher now get Auto Select, a feature that was previously only in Affinity Photo. Normally, if you click on a layer that's in a group, you'll select the entire group, but if you double click, you'll select the object that's inside the group. But now, if you have nothing selected while having the Move tool out, then you can change Auto Select from Affinity's default behavior to Object. Then, no matter what you click on, you will always select the individual layer, not the group it's inside of. Update number 7 is a feature just for Affinity Publisher, Running Headers. Running headers allow you to have things like a chapter name appear at the top or bottom of all of your pages. To see how this works, I've made a simple document with a few chapters taken from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I've already given each chapter's name a heading 1 text style. Now, to see how running headers work, I'll come to the master page. From here, I'll make a text frame at the bottom of the page. 
Now to insert a running header, I'll come to Window, References, Fields. Then I'll open the Document Sections tab. From here, you can adjust the settings for your running header. We can see that our running header will be based on any of the text that we've added the Heading 1 style to, but you could also change that to a different text style if you want. But since my document is using the Heading 1 text style, I won't change anything. Now all I need to do is double click on the word Running Header, and it will insert a piece of code for running headers into my text frame. I'll close the field panel now, and then I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate the text frame, and I'll place this duplicate text frame on the other master page. Now if we come down into the document, we can see that our running header is adding the chapter name to the bottom of each page. That's because the chapter names are what I added the Heading 1 text style to. And as a quick tip, Remember that you can always delete the running header from any page you don't want it, like on the first page of a new chapter. For the 8th update, Affinity Designer now has a couple of new filters. To use these filters, you need to go into the Pixel Persona. From here, go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and then you can choose from the Perspective or the Mesh Warp Filter. After applying the filter, you can easily reshape your layer. And as a side note, there are perspective and mesh warp filters in the regular designer persona, but the difference is that the new filters work on raster layers like photos, while the filters in the designer persona only work on vector layers. Update number 9 is keyboard shortcuts for blend modes, which can be used in all of the Affinity programs. I have a list of the default shortcuts on the screen right now, but you can change any of these to whatever you want. Just open the Assistant settings, go to Shortcuts, and then from the Photo category, change the subcategory to Blend Modes. From here, you can change the shortcut keys to whatever you want. And finally, the 10th new update is Close All, which you can use in all three Affinity programs. This feature allows you to quickly close multiple documents at once. Normally, you can press Command or Control W to close the tab that you currently have open. But now you can press Alt Control W on a PC or Option Command W on a Mac to close all of your documents at once. And there you have it. Those are the biggest changes in Affinity version 2.1. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.